the facilities. For KLEK News, I'm Katie Cravens. It's 904. Community Conversations is brought to you by Arkansas Early Learning, offering no-cost child care in Jonesboro and Northeast Arkansas. Applications at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. KLEK 102.5 FM, good morning to you on your Wednesday. It's July 19th, 2017. This is Community Conversations. Kato Wonder is in the studio with you. My co-host, Mrs. Kabila Harden, is out today, but she will be back, I believe, tomorrow. We were originally scheduled to have Jonesboro Mayor Harold Perrin in the studio, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, Mayor Perrin had another commitment that he had to commit to, so he is not with us this morning. But joining us today is Mr. Bill Campbell. Mr. Campbell is the Communications Director for the City of Jonesboro. How are you doing today, Mr. Campbell? Good, good. Thank you very much, Leganzi, for having me. All right. Well, Bill, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with our conversation. Uh, we got a list of topics. Um, of course, we had the City Council meeting last night, so... Um, why don't you just kind of give an overview of what some of the things that happened in the uh, in the council meeting last night? Tonight was the, uh, last night was the longest council meeting that I've I have seen, and it's largely about zoning. And I think it's uh, a sign of the growth that we're experiencing. And and anybody who knows anything about growth, and you remember your your probably preteen, maybe early teen years when you grew and you had growing pains, and I think. Last night's council meeting was a good example of growing pains. Um, some, some rezonings are being done, some people are requesting to build apartments, some people are, are trying to build new things to broaden, uh, uh, broaden Jonesboro, and whenever you do that, when you build something, it encroaches on neighborhoods, it encroaches on, it, it's change. And uh, the people who uh, the fear of the unknown impacts the people who are closest to that change and so we heard from a lot of people who are fearful of what that change might bring and uh, just a lot of a lot of uh, neighborhoods a lot of rezoning talk last night okay well so was I, I did not attend the meeting but was there any specific development or something that received a, a lot of opposition well, yeah, there's a couple developments uh, south of uh, I-555. Uh, one is a church property that, that wants to ex grow to expand and it, it encroaches upon a neighborhood. And other is one that's been ongoing, uh, apartments on South Caraway. Uh, and uh, some of, you know, some people are worried about traffic. Some are worried about, uh, you know, the not having the the quiet neighborhood or, or, or backyard views and and that sort of thing around their their neighborhood and i think as the city gets uh, grows it's probably going to be an ongoing concern because as more and more people come to jonesboro i believe when mayor perrin was here last month he said three people a day move to jonesboro so as people move to jonesboro obviously these people are going to have you know somewhere that they're going to have to live so what do you think the future is going to be as far as like development uh as where is people going to go to where things can be developed to where there's nice beautiful neighborhoods for the people that are already there as well as the people that are coming there that allows for everyone to live in harmony you know there's a lot of growth headed out east towards the hospital and of course on south Caraway. but one particular part of town where i'm not seeing a lot of growth is like westbound like on parker road i mean I, i'm seeing like signs with land for sale and um, available for development but not really seeing a lot of growth in that direction so do you think that there's could be potential growth in that direction and where do you see yeah. growth coming in the near and future that was and that is one point of contention right there down on parker road uh south of town not so much west but south and uh I guess Southwest Drive, so that's probably Southwest. Um, I think I think we'll see it in most directions at this point, um, but 
the, the, the whole thing comes back to uh, understanding that we have to find ways, developers, city planners have to find way to maintain growth. If you look at big cities and the types of structures that they've built to create little cove, coveys and coves and, and uh, private uh, neighborhoods packed right in next to freeways or we don't have exactly have freeways in Jonesboro but we do have uh, busy intersections and uh, I think that uh, people have to learn to uh, maybe build privacy fences, use use landscaping, uh, do do little things to create privacy in in little more crowded neighborhoods. We got to admit our neighborhoods can be spread out. You know we've got some very nice neighborhoods that are spread out. We've got some nice neighborhoods that aren't spread out, and we've got some not so nice neighborhoods where people have to live on top of one another that really need some help too. Well, and I can certainly understand that. And that kind of transition to something else, street overlays. Um, I actually finally got a chance to drive down Patrick. I've been hearing a lot of talk about the widening of Patrick and the sidewalk, and it's actually uh, very nice. So what is the progress on that particular project as well as future streets that may be overlaid as well as sidewalks as well? Well, for this year, our... Uh we're pretty much used our budget on on overlays. I think here, Patrick is a is an example of a of a street that you couldn't uh, you could barely pass two cars with. That now has uh, it's beautifully wide and safe and and got a nice sidewalk on it. Uh, we we put some new grass in. I think it died pretty quick, so it may be next season before it looks beautiful in the grass there. But uh, I think uh, you're, you've seen the, the overlays that the highway department's doing for us on uh, Southwest Drive and Highland, and uh, man, that's, you know, you, uh, I, it never occurred to me that Southwest Drive really looked bad until I saw three new lanes of, of it uh, milled and resurfaced. And it looks really, <laughs> it looks really nice now. And and once they get that striped and lined, I think that's going to be really a nice drive right there. Of course, drivers like me are going to have to be careful not to speed because it's when, when it looks that when it's when the road's that good, it's easy to, you know, break the speed limit maybe a little bit, Leganzi. Yeah, that is definitely true. We are speaking with Mr. Bill Campbell, Communications Director of the City of Jonesboro, and if you have a question for Mr. Campbell, you can give us a call at 870-277-1080. Once again, the phone number is 870-277-1080. You can also weigh in on our Facebook live stream. We also have another guest joining us. We have Mr. Wixon Hustetler, who is joining us. Uh, Mr. Hustetler, okay, if you want, yeah, you can get over there where Kubila normally sits, and we'll just go ahead and turn your mic on. So, Mr. Hustetler, how are you doing this morning? Doing good, sir. How are you? All right. So, uh, Mr. Hud Stetler, just kind of bend the mic up here just a little bit. And why don't you let the listeners know uh, what are some of the current developments in the Parks and Recreation Department? Man, we got, uh, we got a lot going on right now, obviously, in summertime. So, uh, we're, uh, we're finishing up the, the new trail out at Craighead Forest Park. I uh, hope to have it complete um, by late September, early October. Uh, we're also going to start the, a new section of it going out the back of the park uh, down Craighead Forest Road all the way to Harrisburg Road. Mm -hmm. um, we are building two new shade top pavilions right now out at uh, Joe McCamel Park. Uh, they're 30 by 50. They're, they're big. They're going to have uh, plug-ins for phones, um, fans, uh, just for a bit for parents and kids to somewhere to uh, relax and rest between ball games and eat. Uh, we also, um, you know, doing a lot of maintenance work right now. Uh, this is kind of our down month for, for ball games, so um, we're doing a lot of maintenance work on the fields at softball um, and uh, baseball. Uh, getting ready to do, uh, we're doing a, a soccer sign up, flag football, and full tackle sign up right now. Um, you can go to Jones Bros website and go under Parks and Rec and uh, see the applications there and fill them out online. Uh, so, you know, we've got a lot of things going on. Um, 
I'm getting ready to start working on my budget for 2018. Uh, it's always a fun time to do. So will uh, that budget include any new parks or any new um, amenities uh, for the citizens uh, to enjoy, especially in parts of town that may not already currently have facilities available to them and where people may not be able to readily access the currently available facilities? Yeah, you know, I've, I've been working really hard this year. Uh, there's there's two main areas in Jonesboro that we don't serve in Parks and Rec, and that's the northeast section um, and also the southwest. So I've been working uh, pretty hard on trying to find some land uh, to partner with people on to be able to put a, um, a community center and a playground and walking trails and stuff like that in those areas. Um, haven't been uh, successful yet, but uh, I will continue to strive to find that. Um, and then, yeah, you know, next year's budget, there's going to be some pretty, uh, some pretty big ticket items, you know, with trails. Um, we're applying for the Parks and Tourism Grant to put in a uh, pump track and skills track for, for kids and adults to ride bicycles on. It's a really, really neat concept. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to secure that grant. Um, uh, probably going to put in some more pavilions and a new playground. Um, and uh, you know, just small, smaller things like that. Um, and the bigger ticket items, we just got to sit down with the mayor and figure out um, how we're going to pay for some of this stuff and uh, and where we're going to put it at. So. And of course, one of the things that the mayor always talks about is the importance of public-private partnerships to help fund some of these things, since the city budget is limited as far as how much money. So, uh, have there been? I know you probably can't go into specifics as to who, but. Are there any potential public-private partnerships that you will pursue to make some of these happen? Um, yes, yes and no. Um, you know, the trails, is the, it's not really a private partnership, but obviously the trails are a partnership with the uh, highway department um, and also the federal government uh, on their grants. So, um, but yeah, there will be in the future, there will be definitely be some possibilities for some businesses to step up and sponsor different things on some of the big ticket items when we decide to... Uh, to pull the trigger on those and, and build those so um you know the 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 community is very good to the parks department on sponsorships um we we try to get all the businesses involved with uh, sponsoring our ball fields our kids jerseys um and so we we uh we really thank our sponsors for all that year in year out uh for for, for doing that for the kids all right once again we are speaking with mr bill campbell communications director for the city of Jonesboro, and we're also speaking with Mr. Wixon Huffstetler, who is the Parks and Recreation Director for the city of Jonesboro. If you have a question or a comment for either of these gentlemen, you can give us a call at 870-277-1080. Once again, that phone number is 870-277-1080. Or you can leave your questions and comments on our Facebook live stream. We're going to go ahead and bring uh, Mr. Campbell back into the discussion. Um, talking about the current status of projects with the highway department and one in particular that has made some news is the com potential commerce drive extension from 555 to highway 49 uh, so what are your thoughts on that well uh wixon you can help me here a little bit uh i the the goal is to have that all the way up to to 49 and i think we're going to see signs saying future uh i-555 real soon um, I think that the, the mayor got that worked out. In fact, he got that confirmed yesterday. But, Wixon, what do you know more about that project? No, not really. It's it's uh, it's kind of still in the beginning planning stages of it. So, yeah. Well, we're certainly looking forward to seeing. I think that will definitely, if it comes to pass, to help to divert some of that traffic from Red Wolf and from Caraway. I remember attending a Kiwanis meeting last year and there was someone from the highway department that was mentioning about some kind of potential overpass being built uh, from 555 to uh, 49. Of course, they didn't mention the Commerce Drive uh, development at that time. Um, they just mentioned that they were looking at the works of something. Yeah, that's that's a long-term plan. Now, one of the things that, that is kind of on the roll is a uh, exit lane for uh, Joe Mac Campbell Park, and I think Wixon can talk to you about the need for that because it's it's pretty pretty important and be a big coup for the city. Yeah, we're uh, <clears throat> we're working with the highway department to possibly put a exit ramp off of uh, 63 there that goes to the entrance there of Joe Mac Campbell Park on. Um, on uh, Harry Drive there. Um, you know, the way to get to Joe Mac is you have to go past it 
first on the interstate and then take the exit on Dan and then either come in on Harry Drive or on Dan Avenue and with the amount of people that we're funneling into this park at the same time between soccer and baseball it's just traffic is stacking way back um, up onto Dan Avenue and causing problems for people to drive down Dan Avenue and also get out uh, and cross Dan Avenue so we're working really hard with them to possibly get a exit only ramp off and connect it there to where Harry Drive ends at the entrance of Joe Mike Campbell Park. Well, and I think I've heard, you know, that being mentioned before, and I think that definitely uh, will help. Of course, you know, recently they had the extension of Parker Road from Washington. In fact, my wife and I drove down that uh, about a couple of days ago, and it's definitely have helped. And, of course, as the population of Jonesboro grows, you know, things like that will continue to be needed to help alleviate the traffic. Because I can remember first coming to Jonesboro in 1996 as an ASU student and traffic back then was nowhere near it it is now and of course people who go way further back than me you know can probably tell you know even much more vivid stories uh, you know i've heard some people tell stories of when caraway was a dirt road and of course that probably was maybe even before i was even born but that is neither here nor there once again we are speaking with mr bill campbell who is the communications director of the city of jonesboro and mr wixon huffstetler who is the parks and recreation director for the city of jonesboro and once again if you have a question or a comment for either of these gentlemen you can give us a call at 870-277-1080 once again that phone number is 870-277-1080 we're going to go ahead and bring mr campbell back into the discussion um i want to talk about how the city is doing financially and as a caveat to that one of the things that was brought up and that has made the news is uh jonesboro coming out in support for the online sales tax and that's kind of gotten uh, some interesting opinions of uh, both for and again so i just want mr campbell and mr huffstead looking join in too if you like uh, on this topic on finances and the potential online sales tax well there's two thoughts that come to mind one and first and foremost online sales tax is the law already it's not a new it's not a new concept it's the law and believe me uh, 70 people in the state of Arkansas paid that tax last year and there's three million of us so those of us and I'm not saying I wasn't one of the 70 I'm not saying I was well I noticed that the IRS I, well I noticed that I we order a lot of stuff for the radio station through Amazon and mm -hmm. I've started noticing that sales tax has been added to some of the purchases that we've made from Amazon right and Amazon has voluntarily decided to add the sale tax because they know it's the right thing to do. And when a when a, a major company like Amazon knows it's the right thing to do, that says something. And so they've done this, and they're collecting sales tax. And one thing that has done in May that that increased sales tax receipts by 7.2%. Um, that may have cost you a few pennies, of maybe totaled a few bucks, but what it does, did for your community, for your city, <clears throat> is remarkable, and it will show up in services that you need and and would would complain about if you don't get. Yeah, I think it showed that <clears throat> if we were, if the city of Jonesboro was to get the sales tax off of that, it would bring in two to three million dollars a year extra that we don't have right now that we're not getting which would definitely help um the city with various right. and various it's not programs. going for to, for coffee to my office i promise you it <laughs> well is. if it does share some with me i'm well, just playing I, I will. But, but there are some people that do feel that and of course you know you have some people who are just opposed to taxes in general they just say oh and for well, this, reason. this is just a, another money grab um you know, by the government to take money out of your pocket and, and line up someone's coffers but at the end of the day you know, you got to have money to run a government, even for the essential functions that we all, you know, enjoy. Like, you know, we all want police protection and we all want the fire department to be available. And these things cost money. But I'm not going to get into a discussion. Like well, that. There, there has been government abuse and, and everybody knows that. But uh, th there's you can't be so extreme that you just say we're not going to pay any taxes and then we're going to complain that. Uh, something happened to us at our house or and and the police weren't there or the road is bumpy or this is not pretty in my neighborhood or uh, a b c d uh, you know the, you, you can't you can't have it both ways and uh, let me promise you that that 
I've watched the city of, of Jonesboro for a year and a half now, and it is very efficient. And the mayor runs a very taut ship. He, he demands that all his departments uh, are aggressive and, and in their service, their customer service. He talks, he's, he, he was a banker. Uh, he talks about customer service all the time. Wixon has uh, thousands of kids in his parks every weekend. He knows that he's going to hear about it if the slightest thing is, goes wrong. These people live and breathe customer service. And so we, we, nobody wants to waste taxpayer dollars, but they want, they want the fair thing to happen. And it's got to be fair that uh, if you order something online that you pay the same tax you pay if you walk into a store. And the law already says it is. Um, and the mayor made this comment, and it, it, it may sound harsh, and people may not want to hear it, but it is a form of tax evasion if you're not paying it. Now, now but whose fault is that? Is that the consumer or is that the retailer for not charging it? You, I, that's a valid point. There are a lot of valid points in here, and, it, and I'm going to admit to you that there, there, it may be a little hypocritical of me to bring it up. Because... Yep. I'm not saying I pay well, tax. Well, I mean, on well, my online purchases. I may not have even been aware. Well, we'll leave it there. It was We're going to go to break. This is Community Conversations. This is KLEK 102.5 FM. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Have you told anyone today how busy you are? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. Not many days go by without someone telling me how busy they are. They explain how they're swamped with work or with kids or with traveling. I've said some of the same kind of things. But the odd thing is how some people say how busy they are with a sense of pride. They equate busyness with value, with importance, and with honor. Here are three reasons why busyness is not a badge of honor. First, it harms our kids. When we think busyness is good, we then impose it on our kids. We create an environment where our kids constantly run from one activity to the next. As a result, they feel pressure and get anxious. For more reasons why busyness is not a badge of honor, check out my blog at markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa New Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa New Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K N O M E G A 1908.com. Danny Ford, owner of Glen Sane Motors and Paracord, strongly believes in the values of family and hard work with a commitment to the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces who keep America free, providing sales and servicing of Chevys, GMCs, Buicks, and Cadillacs. Located at 6345 Highway 49 in Paracourt, 870-565-4358. Details at glensaneparagourt.com and at klekfm.org. God bless our troops. The key to making this station even better could be parked in your driveway right now. Donate your old car to us, you'll get a tax deduction, and we'll tow it away for free. Go to klekfm.org for more information. From the KLEK Community Calendar, New St. John Missionary Baptist Church presents Back to School Bash and Diaper Distribution. There will be school supplies given away as well as diapers. There will also be food games, music, and door prizes. This event will take place August 12th, 2017 from 10 o'clock a.m. until 2 o'clock p.m. at New St. John Missionary Baptist Church, 310 North Main Street in Jonesboro. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And we're back on Community Conversations on KLK 102.5 FM with our guest, Mr. Bill Campbell, who is the Communications Director of the City of Jonesboro, and Mr. Wixon Huffstetler, who is the Parks and Recreations Director for the City of Jonesboro. We're going to go ahead and bring back Mr. Huffstetler because he's going to have to leave us in just a moment. He kind of dropped in on us at the last minute. We certainly mm -hmm. thank him for stopping by. But Mr. Huffstetler, kind of let us know about the latest with the Jonesboro Pool. It is definitely a popular spot. I live right down the street from it, and every time I drive by, there's 
parking lot full of cars and a pool full of people in it. It is. It's very popular this time of year. Um, you know, we're, we're open to the public uh, every day, seven days a week, um, from one to six p.m. Uh, you can also uh, reserve for a uh, birthday party or any kind of any kind of gathering after six o'clock. Um, you can uh, do that through my office. Uh, call my office manager and reserve that. Is there a fee? Uh, there is a fee. Yes, um, it's based on the amount of people that you have. Okay. So it's a it's not a it's not a big fee. It's just based on like if twenty five and low. 25 and below 50 to 25 and 50 and up so um but uh but it's a uh, it's a very popular thing we we're already booking for next year for birthday parties oh wow so um, it, is that popular it's huh? that popular yes and i would be surprised if there's any times left this year actually um because we we pretty much book them up a year in advance but you know that's we, something we may that, have a KLEK swim party there, next there year you go. i like that we can do that um, but you know, the, the, the big thing is, is the city needs more than one pool. Um, I know that the mayor knows that a lot of people know that. So we're working hard on trying to figure out how to put another pool in place. Any um, potential locations for the you new know, pool? I, it, it, if it's up to me, I, I think it needs to go, um, on the east side of Jonesboro to separate them. Um, they don't need to be close together. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm kind of envisioning probably at Allen park, mm -hmm. uh, back there in the back where I have that big open space. Um, I, I think that would be a, a great spot. A lot of the kids that live in that community over there could be able to walk to it like they do to this one. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of my vision right now. But also, I'm also working on getting the lake at Craighead Forest back swimmable. Um, I'm a big lake guy. I like to swim in the lake more than I do in the pool. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and what would it, what would it take to get it swimmable? Um, you know, I need I need some aerators, some 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 paddle wheels in there to turn the lake over. The problem is the lake doesn't turn itself over, and so um, I need some aerators uh, and and possibly a new well. So I'm hoping in the future that uh, that uh, I've had some conversations with City Water and Light that we can we can get together once I get this trail done and figure out how to how to get the lake back swimmable and redo the beach and build a concession stand and and go back to in the business of you know renting paddle boats and kayaks and canoes and all that stuff like how it used to be um back when like my mom um was a kid i mean she grew up she that's where she learned to ski at she actually she ski on that lake so and will there be any f I, I i don't i admit i don't go out to craig at force mm -hmm. that often but will there is there currently or will there be options for fishing out there? there there is now i mean you can you can fish the lake now it's it's controlled by game and fish they uh they readily stock it um, what kind of fish? Uh, there's bass, crappie, brim, catfish, um, and then of course you have the kids' pond too that they stock every two months, uh, and it has catfish in it. So um, there actually is a lot of fish in that lake. There's, you know, um, the biggest the biggest deal to catch the fish is you really got to have a boat for that lake. You can't catch them off the bank. Um, uh, I was with Game and Fish last year, and we actually went out and shocked the lake to do a fish count, and I was surprised at the amount of fish and how big the fish were in that lake. So. All right, well, we certainly appreciate that. Mr. Huffstetler, before we let you go, is there anything else that you may want to tell the listeners about what's going on in the Parks and Recreations Department? No, I mean, I just encourage everybody to get out to the parks and enjoy the weather that we have for this short amount of time um, and also get your kids involved. And, and also, we need volunteers to coach. Uh, we're always short when it comes down to uh, our, our sports uh, with soccer and football uh, that we've got coming up. We're, we're, finishing, we're finishing up basketball right now. We've got about 670 kids playing basketball. Oh, that's a lot. Um, yeah. So we'll have a lot of soccer. Um, you know, we'll be 1,500, 1,800 this fall in soccer. So we definitely need coaches um, to just volunteer their time. It's not for very long. You're talking about five weeks um, of your time to, to make a difference in a kid's life. And, and that's what we really need need people to do. So. All right. Well, once again, we want to thank Mr. Huffstetler for stopping by the studio and letting everyone know what is going on with the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Jonesboro. And of course, you can contact him at City Hall if you have any questions or concerns. Of course, I know Mrs. Farrell is staying on you about Llewellyn Park. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I did some good improvements this year with a new pavilion and new playground. So um, I hope I hope she's happy with it. But she's a, she's an advocate of parks, and that's the kind of people that I need. Um, in the community is to be, be vocal about it and get on board and, and help me do things. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of her. And speaking of Ms. Farrell, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and bring uh, Bill back into the conversation. Uh, of course, another topic in which Mrs. Farrell is very passionate about is the jet service. And one of the things that Mrs. Farrell and uh, several others have been petitioning for and calling for for the longest is expanded uh, jet service uh, evening service uh, and even weekend services so people could shop on Saturdays and people could attend uh, church services on Sunday so what is the latest update as far as jets going on well um, 
we, we are growing. I think you, you may have seen uh, releases and, and news stories about uh, increased ridership and progress, slow but steady progress in our jet program. You know, you, you, the transfer station was finished a couple years ago. You're now seeing um, platforms at, at bus stops for uh, the people with wheelchairs and, and wheelchair access, those type of things. Um, they we're having special days and special discounts for, for riders to make. It's an incredibly affordable opportunity. Now, uh, we've got uh, seven buses, five that are always in rotation. We don't have that, uh, that Sunday ridership or Sunday opportunity yet. Uh, but it's, it's something that we're trying to accomplish. Again, it, it comes back to financial finances. And, and, and that's another thing, you know, again, kind of bringing back to what the mayor always says about the public-private partnerships. Would it be possible uh, for some private partnerships to help fund that, or would that not be possible? Because I know that one of the things that kind of hampers things is that there's federal funding tied into it which kind of help kind of dictates what jets can and cannot do but is that even a potential option for some private uh help to make this a possibility well here's the hard part and and it i would hope so but here's the hard part um when you get seek grant funding you you have to have a match mm -hmm. and we are budgeting at a deficit right now mm -hmm. and you know we've had uh, a good reserve but right now that reserve is decreasing and I think right now we have spent two million dollars into our reserve this year so far um, that is whenever you go get a grant like we've got this great stip that's going to build overpasses to uh, get us through some of the trains around town that that I think probably drive motorists insane if you if you're in in certain parts of town and you can't get past the trains. Uh, the, the government's building overpasses, but we got 90 million dollars for a nine million dollar investment. That's an incredible investment, but you still have to have the nine million dollars. Mm -hmm. And on a lot of these uh, grants, they're 50/50 matches. Um, the trails grant. You, you first of all you're going to have to come up with some sort of match on that but you can't even apply for a grant until you pay for a study a study may cost $150,000 uh, and and that's going to take private public partnership we, we try to find people who invest in in that to get that money together so uh, the jet concept there's there's so much money tied to everything and our money goes in so many places uh, you know, we, we had to, we spent two million dollars to widen ditches and clean out ditches after the, the flood of 2016. Uh, you know, we've, you've only got so much money to go in so many places. Kayla Kay, who's this? Hi, this is Kubila. Hey, Kubila. Just want to jump in and ask a question. It was just too long to type. Um, Mr. Bill. Yes. Can you please make a note? And I asked the mayor about um, the paratransit service. As far as I do understand, there's a lot of red tape and details involved. But um, one, adding a debit card option, or two, with the paratransit, you get this ID card. Making that card to where it's loadable so that people who ride the paratransit can just, you know, pay in somewhere, like online or whatever. And then just wipe that card versus keeping cash all the time. <laughs> I see. Yes, I will make that point to them. Because there is a barcode on the back of my ID card. It doesn't have my picture on it, but it has my name and other information. Okay. So, um, just something to make it easier, because I don't always have cash, and I know some of the other riders. And now, I don't know what the bus, the people who ride the bus, what their, you know, concerns are, but I'm speaking mainly for paratransit, since that's the service that I use all the time. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yes, Kibila, I will ask that. 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> all right. Uncle Bill, we thank you for the call. And, of course, if you have a question or a comment for Mr. Bill Campbell, you can give us a call at 870-277-1080. Once again, that phone number is 870-277-1080. You can also weigh in on our Facebook live stream. Now, uh, Bill, you mentioned something about the STIP and overpasses. What are some of the overpass projects that are in the works for the city of Jonesboro? Well, the the, the two major ones are the, the two uh railroad crossings over by uh, on the east side of Nettleton over, over near by Nettleton High School mm -hmm. you know those there's two railroads crossings on two roads right there uh, you're gonna have to help me figure out if that's is that Matthews coming down there or is that uh, there's Nettleton and, and another well, road there's two roads right there well I know the main one is Nettleton and Highland you know yeah that that railroad crossing and, that's right uh, and uh, then, of course, you know, it, when you go around that looking curve around, you know, past fullness of joy, it kind of goes down a bit. And then, you know, the next major crossing is like Highway 463 and 351, that four way stop. If, if you're headed eastbound, if, if that's what I'm thinking that you're talking about. Yeah, that's right. And that's, uh, I think that is, uh, that's the one that, that we get most complaints about and there's more, most concern about. And, uh, I think, uh, you know, when you're dealing with railroads, railroads rule America, and they they, they work with us as best they can, but uh, the railroad is going to go through. They're going to do what they've got to do, and, you know, you know how long trains are. Yeah. You know how many trains there are these days. There's plenty of them. Well, one of the things, <laughs> talking about this particular stretch of railroad, like whenever a train is stopped on a that Highland and Nettleton intersection, what you'll see is you'll see cars go all the way around to that four-way stop at 463 and 351 trying to get on, around it. And then you have a, a long line that's like backed up, you know, trying to get around and, and cross it. I've, I've seen it happen a few times. Um, you know, people trying to, like you say, Airport, yeah. it, it, it's hard to get around those trains. So I think these overpasses will definitely help. I know the Marion Berry overpass definitely helped uh, when it was built of course on the flip side they they closed down Caraway and I'm one of those old school ASU Indians I miss driving straight down Caraway and straight across Aggie Road through campus but that is the price of growth once again we are speaking with Mr. Bill Kimball communications director of the city of Jonesboro another topic I want to bring up is potential new industries as we mentioned earlier Jonesboro is growing at a very fast rate. Mayor Perrin has stated before that three people per day are moving to Jonesboro. And of course, these people that move here, they're going to be looking for jobs and things to do. So just what is your take on any potential new industries? Anything that you can tell us? Well, I do know there are there are talks going on. I think um, I don't think it's revealing too much to say that there are talks going on that, and uh, some of our economic development leaders are meeting with and it's pretty secretive because companies don't want to show their hand to their competitors so they don't even tell uh, the cities that they're coming to the, their, their names they don't even identify themselves when they come talk to city leaders about negotiations mm -hmm. and and it, it's you know it's like brand X is coming here and they, they'll tell you the industry and what they need the type of resources they need and what they do and how many jobs they're going to bring and and what type of footprint they're, they're going to what type of landscape they'll need or how many square feet they're going to use and and all this stuff but you don't even know exactly who you're dealing with sometimes and so uh, I, I think that uh, Jonesboro is in negotiation with not Jonesboro City proper, but the economic development people are in, in negotiation with uh, a pretty interesting company right now. And when I say that, I don't know exactly who it is. Do you even know what type of company it is or what they uh, do? Well, uh, I know that uh, the, our, our uh, goals for ex ex expansion or attraction are ag business. Uh, advanced manufacturing, which is, as we know, food, equipment, and pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. Logistics, and logistics means how we get around. Um, uh, 
what truckers and, and trains and such. And all of those are, you know, sound like potential for some good jobs, you know, with good pay and good yes. benefits, you know, manufacturing. And of course, you know, agriculture is very big in this area. Oh and then, my, and then yeah. you add in logistics. So whatever it is, it definitely looks like it has potential to be something good for the community. So whatever it is, uh, we look forward to uh, Jonesboro. Now, what about, do you ever get anything about entertainment? Entertainment, well, that's quality of life. Mm -hmm. And it's that's all a component of it because to attract people to want to work here, you've got to attract them to want to live here. And, you know, uh, right now, uh, I think it's, it, it. I think we can safely say that it's part of our weakness. I think we had w uh, Wixon here to, to talk about the parks because the parks are the parks in Arkansas State University are our uh, shining monuments to quality of life, mm -hmm. and and you know if you get out to Craighead Park and more people should you know however you can do it get out there because the trails are fabulous. Um, I almost ran over a guy running on the road the other day. Get on the trail, people. <laughs> I love you. Get on the trail. The, the trails. You ain't, you ain't road rage on them, did you? Uh, no, no, but I did point to it. I said, look right there, 10 feet away. That's a trail <laughs> for you to run. It's designed. It was built at, at you know, not at city expense, but at, at the, the expense of Grant and a lot of trouble for you to run. And it's. Uh, well, you don't have to tell me twice. I, I, per, I like I like <laughs> trails and sidewalks. I. If there's a trail or a sidewalk, I'm going to be on it. Me too. I might be walking more than I'm running, but I'm I'm going to be on that trail. I'm, 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 not like try, it. I'm not trying to duck and dodge no. cars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to win. But, uh, and uh, I, I think, uh, I think it's, I just think it's beautiful what's going on out there. And, and Wixon's got more plans. We've got a road coming out of the back of it, so... Maybe you can get to it from two entrances, and and we're going to finish up where the the trail is a, a a full circle, and then you know, like you said, he's got more plans for the uh, the the lake itself, and you know, and not only that, we've got 21 parks or some outrageous figure in town that all of them uh, we want to be as nice as and and useful community neighborhood parks. You know, I live close to Earl Bell center and i'm seeing those tennis courts used uh, pretty much uh, all hours uh, that they're open these days uh the earl bell center go in there and climb on that wall again i'd like to see you scamper up that wall that climbing wall back there in the back does it have a, a safety harness on it it has a safety harness well, i may take you up on this um because i'm actually supposed to sometime this summer go out to diego ranch and get up on one of the horses so i did that I got enjoy on that it. horse. I did real good. Now uh, I was told I'm I'm not a real rider because I didn't have the you know the the reins in my hand. I just kind of, it was like a pony ride, I guess is what you'd call it. Because Michael Michael Jackson is the is the yeah, and we've guy. had him on the, we've had, had him here him. on the show. He's a nice guy, and and he he led me around on basically a pony ride. But it's a cool horse, and it uh, he you know he put my wife up there, and she didn't fall off. And, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to get up on there myself. So I guess now I've got a couple things on my to-do list. Ride the ride the pony and climb the wall. And, of course, we will live stream both of those events. So if I, <laughs> if, if, if I crash and burn, the whole world will see. Once again, we are speaking with Mr. Bill Kimball, who is the communications director of the city of Jonesboro. And, of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can give us a call at 870-277-1080. Once again, the phone number is 870-277-1080. You can leave your questions or your comments on our Facebook live stream. I'm going to get ready to go into a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about liquor licensing. So I'm sure... Bill will have some interesting comments on that. And of course, we'll wrap up with any other things going on with the city of Jonesboro. This is Community Conversations, and this is Kate, LK, 102.5 FM. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. If you're like most people, you have debt. 
But how do you know when debt is spiraling out of control and when is it time to get help? Debtors Anonymous, an organization that helps consumers struggling with debt, lists the following signs that you might have a chronic debt addiction. You live with chaos and drama around your money using one credit card to pay another, bouncing checks, and always having a financial crisis to contend with. You have a tendency to live on the edge. You live paycheck to paycheck, taking risks with health and car insurance coverage, writing checks hoping money will appear to cover them. You experience unwarranted inhibition and embarrassment and what should be a normal discussion about your money. If any of these describe you, take action by joining a debt support group. Go to debtorsanonymous.org to find a group in your area. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Alka Start Early Learning prepares children up to five years old for kindergarten by offering a secure learning environment. Qualified teachers at several locations in Northeast Arkansas at no cost. Applications are available at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. KLEK thanks Toe Daddy's Towing and Recovery for supporting our mission. Toe Daddy offers towing services for residential and commercial clients. Phone number 870-203-9920. More details available by email at toedaddy01 at gmail.com and on klekfm.org. Our motto is, who's your Toe Daddy? Check out the Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show every Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. Listen as Dorinda plays the very best in contemporary gospel music and interviews all of your favorite gospel artists. The Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show every Sunday at 4 p.m. on KLEK 102.5 FM. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And we're back on Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM with our guest, the Communications Director for the City of Jonesboro, Mr. Bill Campbell. And of course, we're still taking your questions and your comments. And it looks like we we may have a... No, that was actually one, on another video. I thought we actually had some, some likes on there. But we're talking about a variety of issues that are going on there with the city. And oh, well, looks like we got Miss Farrell on the line. She was able to get through. How you doing, Miss Farrell? Good morning, Kato and uh, Bill. Your guest, how are you today? Good, Miss Farrell. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I just got in on the last part of your uh, interview and conversation, and I heard you mention in parts. Which you have, I have a passion for jet buffers, and my second one is, is the parts. And we've and talked I about both of them. That's right. Wixon praised you for all your help and and, and Well, thank you. Leadership. And I thank you to all that you do, too. Well, thank I, you. Uh, my part is, well, not my part, but the part that is close to me is the Welland part. And, and we do love what uh, the park director has done. And please, is he not there with you? He, he was, yes. He had to step, he had to go to a meeting, so he's not in, in the okay, studio. Okay, well, I'll just call him. He said he, they was going to put a little fence up on some side, but I hadn't seen it yet, but I'll just read for you to him, to him later. Well, worry and, about uh, it. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I just want y'all to know that I, I, I'm proud of everything that you're doing to help Jonesboro to be improved and make it a better place for people to live. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. You right. too, Ms. Farrell. And thank you, Ms. Farrell. <laughs> and once again, if we have a question or a comment for Mr. Campbell, you can call us at 870-277-1080 or weigh in on our Facebook live stream. Now, uh, another one of the topics that uh, you mentioned was liquor licensing. So what's going on with that? Well, the uh, state legislature has passed a law that that uh, says if, if you're in a dry county that rather than go straight to the ABC 
the city council has to approve your liquor license application before it mm -hmm. goes to ABC. And this is a big deal because this is something that uh, local candidates, we, we have no plans for. It's about to come upon us uh, here in a well, few days, and there's no, we, we, there's no formula for how to do this. Not only that, it's going to make for some interesting council meetings because, you know, there is a contingent of people here in Jonesboro that are very opposed to um, Jonesboro having lick. And, of course, we at Kelly K, we're not going to tell you which way you should feel about it. But we, those people do exist that are strongly you know, for and strongly against it. And I definitely can foresee some city council meetings where the discussions could become very heated and uh, very passionate. Um, especially from those who are against um, establishments uh, getting liquor license. So it's definitely going to be something to look out for in the future. Yeah, and you know, it, it, the problem is we've got so many that already have them. I don't know how you, you know, it's like they say, unringing a bell. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to thrust upon a, a city council, and I, I kind of feel sorry for the council members themselves being put in that position because uh, it, or I think one of the first thoughts in talking with City Attorney Carol Duncan was, uh, well, we'll just ask for whatever measures the ABC board asks. Well, they want a hundred uh, names of members uh, of the of the club, so to speak, you know, if you go to an uh, ab establishment that 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 allows alcohol, you have to sign in, and so they want a hundred names, and and then you have to have a charity that you support, which I didn't, I was not aware of that, but uh, that's uh, that's part of what ABC requests, and uh, that's that's a lot of a lot of work. A lot of work for the city to to put together to try to approve a uh, a request for a liquor license, and so there's there's potential for lawsuits if you don't administer it fairly and equally. And you know if if uh, somebody wanted to put in a little bar and grill and says Olive Garden already allows it, you know how are you going to deny me? Well, how are you going to deny him? Is there going to be a grace period in which the ABC will allow the city to get its policies together? Or they pretty much have said, okay, y'all on y'all, go for it. That's the question right now because we've received no guidance. And I think uh, the mayor has asked some legislators to please give us guidance on that. I think uh, Carol Duncan, the city attorney, has raised this among her peers. I think other cities are... are wildly unprepared for it. I think, uh, from what I can tell, she may have been the first attorney in the, in the state to ask others what they're doing, and, and, and most of them, and I don't think there's been any response. Well, it's definitely going to be something to watch for. Definitely going to be an interesting development. All right, Bill, we got about two and a half minutes left, so there, is there anything else that you would like to say that we may not talk about or reiterate on as far as what's going on in the city? Well, I think, uh, you know, stay vigilant, stay positive, keep in contact with your city government. We're on Facebook. Um, we are, we have a website, jonesboro.org. Communicate with us. Um, the, the departments are all on, the, on that uh, website. Uh, if you if you leave a message to us on Facebook, we'll get back to you. If you want to call us, come call City Hall. People will. We are responsive. You know, every now and then one gets through, and, and we don't get back to you promptly enough. But call twice. Don't be shy, because uh, we have a mayor who is who is very responsive, and and he's very busy. He's incredibly incredibly busy. Yeah, but, I can test that. He because actually he was supposed to be here today, but unfortunately he was unable to make it. So Bill, we want to thank you for being the good soldier and <laughs> stepping in in this place. Well, I'm happy to do it, and I'm sorry he couldn't make it today, but he's he's doing what he does, and he's constantly he's, going. Well, he's working hard for the citizens of Jonesboro. All right, any final thoughts, any shout-outs or anything? 
No, just thank you for what you do, Leganzi. I'm, I've been impressed with your station and what you guys have done for the community since the since the word go and since we met. And uh, I continue to be impressed. And as you grow, and it's uh, it's been an honor. All right, and we, it's an honor to have you here. It's not just you, just the mayor and the chief and all of our guests. Uh, we do this for the community, and we cannot be here without the community of Jonesboro. And one of the things that I appreciate is the support for the community, whether it's just from people listening, uh, people donating, uh, people attending our events, our underwriters, our sponsors, and even those who pray for us because we can never get enough prayer. So once again, thank you to each and every one of you. May God bless you and may you have a great day. You've been listening to Community Conversations. This is Kate, L.E.K. on 2.5 FM. Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. K-L-E-K-L-P.